A Tokyo company aimed for the moon with its own private lander Sunday, blasting off atop a SpaceX rocket with the United Arab Emirates' first lunar rover and a toy-like robot from Japan that's designed to roll around up there in the gray dust. It will take nearly five months for the lander and its experiments to reach the moon. The company iSpace designed its craft to use minimal fuel to save money and leave more room for cargo, so it's taking a slow, low-energy path to the moon flying 1.6 million kilometers from Earth before looping back and intersecting with the moon by the end of April. Welcome back to the Space Gaze. Before we proceed, kindly subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated when we release new videos. Without further delay, let's dive in. By contrast, NASA's Orion crew capsule with test dummies took five days to reach the moon last month. The lunar flyby mission ended Sunday with a thrilling Pacific splashdown. The iSpace lander will aim for Atlas Crater in the northeastern section of the moon's near side, more than 87 kilometers across and just over 2 kilometers deep. With its four legs extended, the lander is more than 2.3 meters tall. With a science satellite already around Mars, the UAE wants to explore the moon too. Its rover, named Rashid after Dubai's royal family, weighs just 10 kilograms and will operate on the surface for about 10 days, like everything else on the mission. Emirates project manager Hamad Al Marzuki said landing on an unexplored part of the moon will yield novel and highly valued scientific data. In addition, the lunar surface is an ideal platform to test new tech that can be used for eventual human expeditions to Mars. Plus, there's national pride. The rover represents a pioneering national endeavor in the space sector and a historic moment that, if successful, will be the first Emirati and Arab mission to land on the surface of the moon, he said in a statement following liftoff. In addition, the lander is carrying an orange-sized sphere from the Japanese Space Agency that will transform into a wheeled robot on the moon, also flying, a solid-state battery from a Japanese-based spark plug company an Ottawa company's flight computer with artificial intelligence for identifying geologic features seen by the UAE rover, and 360-degree cameras from a Toronto-area company. Hitching a ride on the rocket was a small NASA laser experiment that is now bound for the moon on its own to hunt for ice in the permanently shadowed craters of the lunar south pole. The ice space mission is called Hakudo, Japanese for White Rabbit. In Asian folklore, a white rabbit is said to live on the moon. A second lunar landing by the private company is planned for 2024 and a third in 2025. Founded in 2010, iSpace was among the finalists in the Google Lunar XPRIZ competition requiring a successful landing on the moon by 2018. The lunar rover built by iSpace never launched. Another finalist, an Israeli nonprofit called Space2, managed to reach the moon in 2019. But instead of landing gently, the spacecraft Bereshit slammed into the moon and was destroyed. Although not launching until early next year, lunar landers built by Pittsburgh's Astrobotic Technology and Houston's Intuitive Machines may beat ice space to the moon thanks to shorter cruise times. Only Russia, the U.S. and China have achieved so-called soft landings on the moon, beginning with the former Soviet Union's Luna 9 in 1966. And only the U.S. has put astronauts on the lunar surface, 12 men over six landings. NASA's Apollo moonshots were all about the excitement of the technology, said iSpace founder and CEO Takeshi Hakamata, who wasn't alive then. Now, it's the excitement of the business. Liftoff should have occurred two weeks ago, but was delayed by SpaceX for extra rocket checks. Eight minutes after launch, the recycled first-stage booster landed back at Cape Canaveral under a near-full moon, the double sonic booms echoing through the night. A SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket blasted off early Sunday from Cape Canaveral, boosting a commercially developed Japanese moon lander into space for a three-month voyage to touch down in a 54-mile-wide crater. Also on board, a small NASA orbiter that will search for ice deposits in cold, permanently shadowed craters near the moon's poles. Orion's Artemis 1 mission is intended to pave the way for piloted flights to the moon starting in 2024. Tokyo-based iSpace, builder of the Hakuto-R lunar lander, hopes to help pave the way toward commercial operations on the moon, 
carrying small government and civilian payloads to the lunar surface. The first stage, making its fifth flight, propelled the 229-foot-tall rocket out of the lower atmosphere, then separated, flipped around, and headed back to landing at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Heralded by window-rattling sonic booms, the slender booster descended on a brilliant jet of flame, deploying four landing legs a moment before settling to a picture-perfect landing on a concrete pad. It was SpaceX's 155th successful booster recovery, its 27th in Florida, and its second in three days. Hakuto R, meanwhile, was released from the Falcon 9's second stage about 47 minutes after launch. It is expected to reach the moon in five months, using a low-energy trajectory that will carry it a million miles into space. The gravity of the Sun and Earth, along with periodic firings of onboard thrusters, then will combine to pull the craft back to the moon. If all goes well, the spacecraft will descend to the floor of Atlas Crater with a rocket-powered landing in late April, touching down on four shock-absorbing legs. Once on the surface, a small 22-pound rover known as Rashid, built by United Arab Emirates, will roll down a ramp and onto the surface to study the geology of the region, soil properties, dust movement, and the electrically charged plasma environment. An even smaller half-pound rover the size of a baseball, known as the Japanese Lunar Excursion Vehicle, will carry its own cameras onto the surface for independent research. Takeshi Hakamata, founder and CEO of iSpace, said the company's goal is to help foster development of a lunar economy and infrastructure by providing rapid access to the surface of the moon, augmenting the NASA-led Artemis program. Joining Hakuto R aboard the Falcon 9 was NASA's lunar flashlight, a so-called smallsat equipped with four infrared lasers, orbiting the moon in a hugely elliptical orbit, carrying it as far as 43,000 miles from to surface to within just nine miles at closest approach. The lunar flashlight will probe the lunar soil below for signs of ice. Rock and soil will simply reflect and scatter the laser light, but ice will absorb it. NASA is especially interested in probing permanently shadowed craters near the moon's south pole, where earlier satellite observations detected chemical signatures that could indicate the presence of ice. Ice could be a critical resource for future astronauts, and it's a central theme in NASA's Artemis program. If accessible deposits are found, the ice could be broken down into oxygen and hydrogen, allowing future explorers to manufacture rocket fuel, air and water on the moon without the huge expense of hauling the commodities up from Earth. We are bringing a literal flashlight to the moon, shining lasers into these dark craters to look for definitive signs of water ice covering the upper layer of lunar regolith, Barbara Cohen, the principal investigator, said in a NASA release. I'm excited to see our mission contribute to our scientific understanding of where water ice is on the moon and how it got to be there. We believe that's going to be the key to initiate the lunar economy, he said. In order to utilize such resources, we believe that in the near term we need high-frequency transportation to the lunar surface to support scientific missions, exploration missions, and also technology demonstration missions. We are planning to offer frequent missions to the surface. After 2025, we plan to offer two to three missions per year. That's all I have for you guys for today. If you liked watching this video, please make sure to click the like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell icon so that you may be notified when we upload a new video. Thanks for watching.